Hi, I'm Daniel Sawblade. And I'm Cartoon Ryan. Welcome to the Sawblade 666 YouTube channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the Frankenstein Artist Portfolio published by Tyrannosaurus Press in 1977. This is uh, quite literally some of the best gothic horror art you'll ever see. Absolutely. So the Frankenstein portfolio, um, man, I was so, well, <laughs> a little backstory on this, uh, Abby, uh, spotted this at a comic book store called, uh, Atomic, um, I think it's Atomic, no, yeah, Atomic Monkey here in town. And it was just sitting on a pile of other stuff. And uh, for the price, I immediately picked it up. But, um, and uh, 106 out of 1,000 signed by the man himself, yeah, Ernie Wrightston. Amazing, dude. <laughs> so it was really clean copy. Awesome find. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> In the late 70s and early 80s, it was really common for comic artists and fantasy artists to do artist portfolios. So small publishing houses or the artists themselves would print uh, key images uh, on high quality paper for prints. And this is what this is. I've, I first encountered uh, this type of presentation or format for art believe it or not way back during our church days yeah. <laughs> somebody at church had um, a Conan portfolio by Barry Smith that they let me Man. borrow awesome and holy fuck yeah yeah it just that that really triggered uh, just that hunger to see really fine published uh, or printed matter concerning art and this is a great example of it I love this cover art this is my actually one of the first if not the first Bernie writes an image I've ever seen and again another church person ironically yeah. enough um, Mark Crittenden showed this book to me and I think his copy had this cover mm -hmm. so um there's been different pub publications of this material and for yeah. good reason. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, it's legendary. It's one of his most famous works. It's iconic. Know? I think yeah. it took him five years to illustrate it. I believe it. Yeah, totally. Cause I mean, you look at, I mean, another good comparison and we'll have to do it later down the line is Robert Crumb's uh, Genesis. Right. I think that took him like what seven years, I think, or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. So that actually has more more um, illustrations in it, and it was a comic. So. Yeah, but the, I um, mean, dude, the the level of detail. Oh, it's in this, insane. It's it's unreal, you know. So we're gonna open these, open this up. There's a series of prints in here, and um, let's slide these out. Look at that. Even comes with the. Uh, the um, Here, I'll zoom in a it's like a little um, flyer or a little uh, just a little note regarding uh, what this is and the information on the book because it hadn't come out yet at this point. This is 1977, so it's amazing that you have that slip right there. You know, yeah, it's so cool it's, that uh, it was in here. Yeah. Um. Well, the the. The person that owns Atomic Monkey, this is from his collection. <coughs> yeah. So he uh, bought this when it came out. Mm -hmm. So and he was willing to let it go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, he probably has an extra one, I bet. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Not me. This is uh, this is it. Oh, let me um, zoom out here. Yeah, zoom out. Cool. Okay, so <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. What hasn't been said about this, but we're coming from a point of view as um, being artists ourselves, 
and me primarily working in pen and ink with all my stuff, I still am blown away by this. Um, it, it really re recalls or, or takes me back to um, learning about artists like Franklin Booth, which I later found out influenced Bernie Wrightston. Hmm. Franklin Booth was a pen and ink artist that was inspired by engravings he saw, but he didn't understand that it that was a whole different process. Oh, it wasn't okay. actual pen and ink, but the, he emulated it with pen and ink, and that's what created this crazy, super detailed line work. Mm -hmm. So... Um, in interviews, I've I've um, read that you know Bernie Wrightson was trying to kind of you know invoke that feeling of older turn of the last century illustrators and illustration in general. And I think he's achieved it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at it and it, it has that engraved look to it. Yeah, you know? it looks you know like like it's etched. You know, you know. And I mean, you look at this this scene right here i mean it looks like you're just looking at a snapshot of everyday life from back then it's amazing how he uh he captured that moment you know and it, it's just unreal that he's a capable of even capturing a moment like that you know when i when i saw this work i had no idea in my mind what tools or or how it was even accomplished I, I was pretty young I was probably I don't know 13 14 maybe so I had no idea about pen and ink and stuff yeah and then in my later years and it did my professional career I'm trying all kinds of tools you know I've done nib I've done brush I've done just about every technical pen and marker you could think of and I always wondered how how this work was achieved and i kind of was looking at it thinking oh, it's it's a nib or you know it, but then some of it looks kind of brushed out apparently most of this was brush work which is even more phenomenal i can't to me. i can't wrap my head around <laughs> yeah. it that it's brush yeah. you know brush lines the control you have to have to yeah. achieve that yeah, and the spacing between each it's, line, I, I can't. Um, I unreal, can't comprehend that. As someone who works with a brush, uh, not all the time, mm. but a good portion of the time, and and throughout the years, it, it's taken me a good while to try to grasp that tool. Uh, it this is insane to me. Mm -hmm. Look at the lighting, though. Before we go on to the next, the lighting right there. Oh yeah, I mean. Yeah, bouncing his, off of him. His it's, sense of light and, and shadow is, yeah. is uh, it's unmatched. Unparalleled. Yeah. yeah. Man, look at that. This one here. Uh, man, it just blows me away. Look at the feet on that corpse, man. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and then the light coming through the laboratory like that. That's just so badass. And it's so, just that dark, gothic, yeah, uh, early 30s horror movie vibe. Yeah. Because it has got this Grim Reaper up up here. There's demons at the yeah. top. Um, it's very Victorian looking. Yeah. And then also, you know, it's got the gothic vibe to it, horror vibe. It's amazing. Yeah, the line work and hatching, and to have so the vision to to make an to compose an environment like that just from your mind, like it, it's my my brain doesn't you know compute like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how much reference he had. He did. I've read in interviews. He read the book. Yeah, uh, he knew the material and was a fan, obviously of. Uh, it shows you know, the Frankenstein. Uh, IP and, and I'm sure he grew up with the the movies as well. Here's something that's you, you mentioned light. Here's a man that really knows his stuff because if you look at this lantern, I just now noticed this. 
the light from the lantern is bouncing off his knuckles here, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. But you've got the light coming from these windows that's hitting the back of his hand, yep. creating the shadow on the other side. Yep. That just it's just so masterful. The it light is. from the window. Yeah. But but I just geek out on all these tiny lines and 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 the direction of the hatching to create yeah, this like kind look, of misty look and then yeah. looking here at these lines yeah but how he breaks it up here yeah. to create the different layers yeah it gives you it gives the illusion that beams of light are just kind of know, that smoke bouncing smoky through, hazy, hazy yeah d- dust particle look mm-hmm. in buildings when light oh yeah you know shining through a window But yeah, it, it blows me away every time. And just for um, just so that people know, you can you can still get this material in the the Frankenstein book, um, the illustrated book. There's different copies. Some some of them be kind of pricey. Um, but it's it's worth worth it if you find one. Oh yeah, uh, no doubt about it. These are selected pieces from that book, so uh, just so that people. Know. Here's one that really has always impressed me: just the stark contrast of of this the figure work here, primarily in black against the white. Yeah. Background. Uh, the buildings. I mean. It's just so, so good. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the contrast too is a, is really cool because you have all this dark down here, and the characters are dark, super dark, and then the backgrounds a lot lighter. They just they pop out immediately. Your eyes go to the the center of you know action where the action is. Yeah, he framed it in such yeah. a way that's that's uh, your eye moves yeah. where it was intended to move. On all of them, really. The detail of the, the rock yeah. getting thrown, you know, there's objects being, look, a yeah. frying pan, a yeah. rock. There were, yeah. Um, Pitchforks getting... I, I recently watched the 1931 movie with Boris Karloff and... There's buildings that look just like this mm-hmm. in the movie. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, just the line work. It, mm. It's just so good. The composition, line work. I geek out every time. Yeah, I'm geeking out now about it. Mm-hmm. Just, it's just so good. Yeah, it's a complete masterpiece. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to own. <laughs> Here's one that's pretty brutal. Brutal um, and then... I, I don't know, kind of beautiful at the same it's, time it's because beautiful. of nature. You got nature, overgrown grass and shrubbery everywhere, and then you have a you have her hanging right there off the tree. It's it's insane. It's brutal and beautiful at the same time. The paper on here, I have to say, guys, is beautiful. It, it's it's nice and heavyweight, but not quite cardstock. Yes. So it's not cardstock at all. This is high quality paper. It's got like yeah. a nice little texture to it's it. It's got a little volume to it. Um, it's like this nice texture mm-hmm. to it. Uh, but it, the ink just goes so well. It's so sharp and crisp mm-hmm. on here. Completely. Um, I mean, it's about as sharp as it gets, you know? Yeah. It's the next best thing to owning yeah. the original. And then those blades of grass. I mean, yeah. look at that, dude. That's incredible. There oh, you man. go. Look at that, man. Talk about striking. And the size of that thing, man, that monster. Look at that. It's just, it's massive. And it really does give the look of being composed from different body parts and stuff. You know, yeah. he did a really good job on that. The twisted, contorted. Yeah, it's all mm-hmm. contorted and not right. I'm not sure if here this is white media or that he scratched through the black, but uh, whatever he did is quite effective. Oh yeah, it gives that illusion of you know rain dropping through there and wind. 
So badass, man. Good God. Mm. Solid blacks, man. Yep. The directional line work of these clouds leading to this figure. Mm -hmm. mm. You you know, you can just really learn a lot from looking at this stuff. I mean, that's as cinematic as it gets right there. I mean, that's, I agree. That's a, I mean, that's a still shot from a horror movie, dude. <laughs> yeah. Ah, dude, look at that yeah. interior. And it really does give the impression that that office is being used at its fullest capacity. He's got papers, it's pretty books, lived in, sta- right? yeah, it <laughs> stacks. Stacks of books, beakers everywhere. It's just look at this the skeleton yes. just chilling right here in the coffin. <laughs> yeah. So much going on. And then the 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 woodwork. The woodwork in here. Yeah, the, the beams, wooden beams everywhere. Great. To pull that off and have it just flawless like that is just what's beyond me. We'll go through the book too at some point yeah. because uh there's a lot of illustrations that uh that are left out from this uh presentation uh, but i thought we'd go over this just to show the quality of the printing and then the, the scale yeah the size uh, of it's what's cool that's what 11 by 17 uh, I would think. or 14 maybe yeah. yeah yeah that's that's really cool to see at that size i've never seen those images that big it's always been in the book you know yeah yeah, that's that's a great find for sure. Absolutely. I'm just noticing how again he's playing with light sources. You know, see that lamp is yeah. solid white. It's completely lit up. But then he the way he hatches this kind of smoky effect. Yep. That's just oh, Yep. That's so from good. the from the flame. Yeah. It's so good. Yep. If you're not familiar with Bernie Wrightson, look look into his stuff. Because yeah, it's a must. It's if a this must. isn't enough to <laughs> spark the interest, if it wasn't already there, I don't know what else. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. We'll be talking about Bernie Wrightson a lot on this channel. Um, like like we said before, he's uh, he's a huge influence and uh, also just seemed to be a really good person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but anyway. Cool. I think that does it for this. Awesome. Uh, if you like this uh, material and subject matter and want to see more, um, support it by liking and subscribing. Yeah. And uh, hit the notification bell. Yeah, and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Absolutely. Cool, and we'll catch you guys next time. See you guys. Bye.